Okay, so that's a sneak peek of one of my upcoming songs uh, called Sword of Light. Uh, and yeah, so I've been for about seven months now, I've been uh, writing and producing music for Epidemic Sound. And it's been really interesting because they give me really like professional feedback every time I'm, I send them a demo. And in that, because they give me such good feedback, I get better at mixing and mastering really fast, I think, because their feedback is really on point. Uh, so this uh, song here, Sort of Light, uh, I actually made this in just a few hours. So it's a full song. I kind of just sat uh, down uh, two weeks ago and just did something and it ended up being like a really interesting <laughs> track. Uh, but yeah, the re point of this video is that <laughs> we're going to make a tutorial video. And we're gonna talk about the my best mixing tips for chill step or actually any genre really works for most things. Uh, so yeah, and before we start, I can actually tell, uh, share that I've updated my Patreon, so I'm updated the the rewards or the tiers, so you can just join and help. You can be a wanderer. You can be a druid of the animus. You can be a high druid of the animus. You get perks and you get like behind the scenes footage, which I'm gonna start filming this summer. Uh, since I'm moving, I'm moving in two days uh, to put my all my music stuff in my dad's uh, photo studio. So it, it will be like half <laughs> photo studio, half music studio, and it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> uh, what's different? What's really different here is the last one, the Secrets of the Arcana. Uh, or Arcana, you can pronounce this in different ways. But basically, what's happening here is if you decide you want to be my Patreon for the highest, for the highest one, uh, you will be. I will be your mentor in music production, and I will also help you make melodies. Like you will get me to be featured on any, any song you want. Uh, but since that's kind of like. This is kind of time consuming. <laughs> I decided to just limit it to 10 people. And I think there's four that picked this. So there's only six left. If you think that's interesting and worth it. I just try to make them really worth your time and money. So uh, this is just like Patreon isn't like a big, a big like part of my income, but it's, it's like a nice way to support mu musicians that you care about. I, I think I personally, I support uh, Safeiros and, uh, and a friend called Jewel, Jewel Sandberg, uh, who makes piano music. So I, I like to support my friends here. So anyway, yeah, you can check this out if you if you want to. But I know because of this Corona situation, a lot, a lot of people don't have jobs. So, you know, you should think about yourself first. Don't think about me. But you know, it, this is here if you want to support me and get some help with your music. Uh, time has been really limited lately. Like I'm, I have school and I have music and I make music for Epidemic Sound in Stockholm, and I work out almost every single day. I do. I I wish I didn't have to sleep because if I didn't have to sleep, I could make so much more uh, music. Anyway, I remember. And th this feedback thing is kind of important because I remember back in uh, early 2014, I uh, just when I had released Animus, which by the way, I uh, might as well just open up Spotify. What am I listening to? Silent. Okay, so back in 2014, <laughs> oh, a long time back, I had just released this album. I was kind of happy with it. Like, I was like, I've stepped up my producer producing game. I made some really interesting melodies. And then I actually paid this guy, really nice guy actually, but oh. Uh, I paid Varian to sit down in Skype with me for like one hour, maybe two hours. I paid like $40. And he would basically tell me what I'm good at and what I'm bad at. And he told me, you're really good at melodies. So I, felt, I was like, oh yay. Thank you, <laughs> uh, but uh, 
he also told me my mixing <laughs> was really bad. And me, in 2014, when I had just made Animus, you know, I, I, I wasn't that good at mixing, but I thought I was. Like, I, I not... <laughs> it's complicated, but... Uh, I didn't really pay much attention to mixing because I just wanted my music to sound chill and like beautiful. I didn't care about it sounding big or professional. It was more about the emotions. And when this guy, this like really popular producer told me like your mixing is really bad. And then he told me what I need to work on. It was both destructive because it made me not want to make it made me not want to release any music for almost a year. Or even almost two years, uh, which is that's 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 destructive, right? But on the good side, it made me want to get better at mixing. So what happened was that I only released two songs, and that was like half a year later. I released "Deeper Still" and "Hurt." Hurt went on to get like, I think it has a few million streams now, which is crazy. Because this song, I was, I was so close to scrapping this song and never releasing it. But some kind of miracle, I released it and most of, most people loved it. And it was really weird because I was so close to deleting it. Anyway, from I think this song was released in like November or maybe October, October 2014. So I had had like a downtown downtime from releasing songs for almost eight, eight months. Maybe in ma maybe even nine or ten months. So I think my mixing from Animus here to Hurt, my mixing became a lot better, especially my kicks and my snares. And that's what I want to talk to you to you about today. Why did my kicks and snares get better? What did I learn? It's now been like five more years. What have I learned to make kicks and snares sound punchy and tight? I'm gonna tell you what I learned here. I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing now because I have kind of just recently updated how I mix my kicks and snares a little bit. Not much change because I'm kind of happy with my kicks and snares, but they can always get better. You can always you can always improve and learn. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, ooh, let's just start, I guess. Let's uh, open up a project. Let's open up the let's open up the epidemic project for the latest song called Sort of Light. I'm also gonna check my phone because I, I I wrote some notes for myself, so I don't forget <laughs> what I'm gonna talk about. Uh, yeah. Okay, it says first off, we're gonna talk about side chaining. Actually, we're just gonna make a new project for that. Side chaining. This is like <laughs> one of the most important techniques that you could want. Uh, when you side chain, you basically, if you want to side chain a bass or a pad or an instrument, what you what you mean is that. Every time the kick drum hits, you want that instrument, that side chained, to duck, to d decrease the volume, or decrease like the frequencies that you want. Basically, what that makes it, it makes it sound kind of bouncy. It kind of gives the song some groove. Uh, it's kind of like magic. <laughs> uh, but if you don't side chain, then the kick will hit. And then all the frequencies. Let me check, show you in a here. Like then all the frequencies we like colla collapse in the same place, which means it can distort because there's suddenly, if the kick hits hits here and all your instruments are here, then it will be too much noise in the same place on the spectrum. Uh, you don't want that. <laughs> Because it, it sounds it sounds bad. So what you want to do is you want to, with volume, you probably the kick wants to go down like here for like a millisecond, like tsh, tsh, or like yeah, 
it's really important. Uh, but how how do I sidechain? In the beginning, for like my old songs like Coming Home and Hope, I would sidechain using uh, something called Peak Controller. And I would unmute this here. And basically, you would right click your instrument, and you would link, you would link like this. So now every time, you see every time you hit this kick, uh, this, this kind of ducks. Oh, it's okay. It doesn't do it anymore. Oh yeah, okay. But over the years, probably like a, a year ago, I realized there's a better way to sidechain. And that's actually thanks to Blackmail, because Blackmail shared, I think it on his Twitter, how he sidechains nowadays. And he said he sidechains using a limiter or a compressor. And I was like, how? <laughs> how would you sidechain using this? Turns out it wasn't as hard as I thought. So you open up the, the you open up the fruit limiter and you press the compressor here. And then you take the ratio here, you put it all the way to the right, and you drag the threshold to like the to around the middle. I usually just do like this this. So it's on the uh, on fifty percent. And then I right click right click this here, the threshold, automate. And then we're making a little side chain here. Uh, probably this big. What you want to do is you want to like be in control as much as you can. And in the middle, we want to make it 50% here and 50% here. And then in the beginning, we want to take it down to around 10%, so 0 0.1. And then you go to this line here. And you just click it, and then you drag it like this. And now you could put put them down like this. You have made a side chain. But I probably have to. I probably actually have to do something with it, so it's easier to explain. Let's put down a kick. Let's just take a simple kick here. Uh, put it here, and then on this one we're gonna we're gonna have a pad or something. Do we have a nice pad? Don't judge me. No, it it it'll be fine. Mm, maybe some strings could it work. Should it work? Just let do something simple. Okay, sounds okay. And then put to the song because if we, right now in the pattern we want to go to the to the song which plays from the playlist. Okay. I mean, I hope it works. Uh, you can hear that it kind of ducks, right? Probably have to put the kick here. Maybe we can go a little bit faster, because it copy that. Am I doing something wrong? Uh, take another kick. This sounds a bit better. This 
one is nice. That doesn't work for that. Okay. See this one going ham. I feel like this is a pretty bad example, but it's still how I do my my side chaining. So I like to side chain when there's a kick and when there's a snare, basically. Uh, and if you don't want to use that then you could you could use a plugin called sidechain no you call it kickstart uh, but this is only good if you want the uh, this rhythm or this is a pretty cheap plugin i think it costs around 10 or 15 dollars it's made by Nick Romero, as you can see. But it, com it comes in really handy when you m when I make like intros and stuff. I really, really like uh, this uh, Kickstart plugin for like pianos. Maybe I can give you like a, a sneak peek. If I open up a piano and if I drag my keyboard closer. <laughs> And then we'll add some uh, reverb. Reverb. Without. Add a little bit of uh, magic here. I really like that because it makes it more like bouncy, a little bit more wavy and dreamy, I think. So yeah, that's uh, my two ways of side chaining, either with this Kickstart plugin, or using uh, Fruity Limiter and automate automating the threshold. Uh, and since we already talk about reverb, we can just talk about that as well. Now I I recently bought Valhalla Room. I already used Val Valhalla Shimmer for like four years, and this is my favorite, most favorite plugin of all time. Easy. Why? <laughs> because Shimmer, this makes basically a tail. Uh, it makes like a tail of. Maybe you can hear. Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> like, uh, this is my fav most favorite reverb ever. But this is this is basically only good on pianos or guitars and or like flutes. Basically, this is good on lead instruments and pads and vocals, but not really anything else. Uh. So I use this between like 50 and 10. This is how my preset works, uh, if you want to copy this. Uh, I really, really love this one. But recently I bought Valhalla Room because I wanted a good reverb for my drums. I wanted a good reverb for my claps and uh, yeah, we can get to the claps as well. Uh, 
So what I did was, <laughs> thankfully I, I bought this like a month ago. After using Isotope Reverb for many years, I decided to step it up and get the Valhalla room that everyone likes. So I like to put between 8 and like 20, probably around like 10% reverb on the snare. Let's open up a snare. Give me the snare. It's a pretty good. It's a good snare. Uh, let's open up what I do to mix snares. Oh, this is my old one, okay. So what I have done here is I have uh, some EQ, some basic EQ that I do for snares. Uh, you can change them a bit how you want, but this is usually how I, I want decent amount of mid and some high here. Uh, then I put then I put LF Max Punch on. Uh, this is, by the way, like another one, another one of my favorite plugins. I'm only gonna talk about my absolute top plugins here. So this is uh, one that I've used since I made Hurt back in 2014, and I still use this to this day. Uh, the LF Max Punch by Voxengo. I use this on my kicks and my snares to give them more. Basically, on kicks, I would go down to minus 24 and I would give them some punch. And I would uh, increase the comp compress comp uh, the compressor to around 35 to 40. And I would inc uh, increase the, the low gain here. Uh, the saturation is minus two, so I usually keep this on like zero. Mute the sub here. Uh, also, I make it mono. I think it sounds a bit better usually in the mix. So this, what this will do in your snare is it will make it a bit more punchy. Maybe not even a little bit. It can make it a lot more punchier. And then thirdly. We use the OTT compressor, and uh, this is a free plugin. Uh, I didn't say it before, but uh, the Max Punch. This is this is around fifty dollars, but it it sounds expensive. But I've used this for over five years now, so it's well worth the money. Uh, but this one OTT is for free. What happened to my sound? Okay, here. Uh, this is a compressor, and I, l I like to put this on sometimes on leads like uh, key like synths and stuff that they want to pop out from the mix. Uh, but I found that it actually sounds good on snares too, <laughs> because it makes the snare uh, pop in the mix a bit too. Uh, let's listen without it. Oh, there's a piano. A whiff. I feel like it, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit brighter. I like to keep this around like 20%. You can play with these ones, but I don't really do that. I usually make presets for myself that I use for a long time. And then fourth, <laughs> on the fourth row, we use the room. And I think what I did was I used the preset here. Room is, is there a snare big? Obvi obviously, this sounds kind of bad, <laughs> so we take it down to like eight, and it sounds pretty good. Let's see if I did something different. Okay, so we reduced the depth to like 25%, and we took this down from 100 to like eight or 10%. And then we have a limiter just to make sure it doesn't uh, distort. This is not super important because you will still have a limiter on the on the master channel later. But I just like to do it anyway. It doesn't really do anything bad for the sound. It just makes sure it has a roof. Uh, and then, but what I really liked was when I started to play with my 
uh, claps a bit more because I wasn't I was not happy with my claps uh, you know you want to have a clap uh, to layer it with the snare so the snare you want to have it kind of the snare is supposed to be kind of dry with like a little bit of reverb here you don't want this sound this is does not sound good you want this to be kind of kind of dry but you want to have oops that was not good uh <laughs> why did i delete that okay my bad uh let's see if i can remi fix that get a kick get a, get a snare back here please Uh, okay, we have the snare here, but well, now we want to have, now we want a clap, because we want to layer the snare and the clap. Okay, so let's take a, let's get a clap that I like, I have them here. So what I did, let's see what I did. Okay, so we have some EQ again, just to reduce some of the really high, because we we want mostly the energy here. This is the this is the energy that we that we want. So, okay, we have the Valhalla room. This is also a snare big room preset. but reduced to 40%. Let's see if it was actually that. Ah, okay. So that we, what, what we did was 40% and then make this like the decay around five or six seconds. I think I had it around six seconds. So now it has a nice like delay. Let's check another. Hey, change. And my favorite one. This reverb is so much more high quality than the last reverb that I used for clap, so I'm really happy with this sound. But I wasn't completely satisfied, so I added a Valhalla Shimmer on 20%, but we made it only 50% effective with this little thing here on the, if you see here. So I kind of combined two reverbs just to, to make the tail a little bit, little bit more detailed. So result a clap that I really like and I'm utilizing two of my favorite reverbs from Valhalla. Uh, so yeah, that's how I do that. Let's see what I want to talk about more. Uh, obviously we got into layering because you want to kind of layer, let's see here, see, you see this snare here, it's pretty like loud, so we're gonna reduce it to like minus 10 decibel, and now we're gonna try to find another snare that's good that you can layer with that. So we talked about side chaining, we talked about reverb, now we're gonna talk about layering for a little bit. Not very much. I'm not really going like super detail, super in depth. I mean, okay. So I like these snares. I bought these snares on uh, or like downloaded them on uh, Splice. So I really like this uh, Virtual Riot and the uh, this silent snares. They're very punchy. They're made for like heavy dubstep, but I swear they're good for chill step and really chill music overall. You just need to EQ them. It's 
also kind of loud. Okay, now we need another snare. Now we need to reduce some of the mids here. I'm gonna save this in case it crashes. Tutorial. Did I spell it right? Yeah. Uh, go back to the claps. Uh, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna make a kick now as well, because you might want to know that secret kick technique. Uh, let's make a kick down here. Fist bend, usually have the kick in the top, in the top here. Or I, I, can, I can actually do that if I want to. Uh, kick! A good kick that I like are these ones. From the from the Skybound sample pack on Splice, it's like a future bass pack. I'm recording, right? Oh, I forgot to record. I'm just kidding. I think I'm recording. Let me know in the comments if I'm recording. Yay. Uh, okay, what do I do with kicks? So <laughs> this is kind of like cheating. <laughs> Uh, I have these like presets that I already do. It makes producing so much faster when I do that. Okay, so first thing I layer the kick. So it goes to two channels, to the master and to like number five here. Uh, it kind of makes all kicks a bit more fat and punchier. Usually I leave the kick, I have like a, a high pass here. I'll just do it from the beginning to show you guys. Right click this one, high pass. I usually leave it around 50 or 100 depending on how, how much bass the kick has. I kind of want to increase this one to like 5. Kind of want to decrease this a bit to the middle here. Uh, and then, oh again, the magic. The magic sauce, <laughs> which is uh, the max punch. Uh, minus 24, around plus 5 in the punch gain. This does a lot though. I, I noticed that the, the compressor needs to be on 35 or 40 between to sound the most punchy as it can. So. 35 I like a lot. If I increase this too much, it sounds really bad. Like, it just peaks. So around around like 2 or 0. Maybe even 4 sometimes. Uh, okay, let's put this out. I don't like that it's so small. Oh, much better. So it's like do. Let's make it 150 BPM. Let's make it disc kick instead. Obviously, you would want hi-hats to make it sound better. Also, here comes something really weird that I just started doing recently. Reverb 
on the kick, but only like 1%. Trust me, I'm a scientist. You can be, you can like, you can't really hear it. But that like 1% will do a difference in your mix. So yeah, I'd actually recommend doing a 1% reverb thing on your kick. So I like, this sounds good in my headphones at least, like, just like mixing wise. Uh, so yeah, layering is good. I don't really layer kicks. Uh, you can, and I'll, in some genres you should, but I think in my genre I, I just try to find good samples and go with that. Uh, let's see. We can go to the master channel since we have it right here. What I do, let's see. Master, okay, so master epidemic. My master usually looks like this. We ha here we have the the limiter. It's usually like zero or plus one decibel. To make my music is usually pretty low, so it could be nice to increase it by one decibel in the master. And then uh, here is really what's important. Uh, you do a low cut and you, you do like a, a high pass and then you make it steep. Otherwise it's like this, you don't want that. You wanna make it steep. And then you wanna cut off like the low, like the low 28 or like the low 30 hatch because the base, like the sub, you can see here, you can actually see, it says sub here. So anything below 40 hatch is usually not needed, but sometimes I'll really like the really really low bass. So I, I I probably keep my mine around like 28 or 30 hatch because below below here is unnecessary information that you don't really want in your song. It's just it's it, it you have en energy here that you don't want because as a human. You can't really hear this anyway. You can't hear it or you can't really feel it. Uh, so it's just unnecessary space in your song. Uh, yeah, you don't you don't really want it. Uh, so I do a cut like this, between 20 or 30 hatch. And the same thing up here. You do like, uh, this time you do a low pass with a steep curve and you cut off the really top. Uh, I'd say like the top like 1% or 2%. You could probably do like this type value 98. And uh, this is also the same thing. You cut up, you cut off the really high top that you don't really want to hear because uh, it can be really screechy and annoying. So you want to cut off the really high top. And uh, then it's up to you if you want to add something in here and I just keep it straight line because I don't read, I don't really need it much on my master. It's just these two things. Uh, I've been, I've been considering adding like reverb on, on the master, but I ended up not really liking it. I have reverb on everything else anyway. Let's see if we can uh, do something cool really quick here with like a pad or something. Let's do serum because we, everyone likes serum. Hyper Arp, what's that? Ooh. That's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, Can we side chain this? Uh, 
that's kind of cool. Uh, Damn, that's kind of that's kind of nice. <laughs> hey. It could like become something, you know. Now we add some crazy reverb. Uh, yeah. Time to show you guys probably the fourth or the fifth trick, and that is uh, that is the imager. Also a free plugin, by the way. You can download this for three for free, I think, on Splice. Uh, this I like to use on pianos and pads and sometimes the leads it makes the instrument you can make them wider or wider or more narrow Okay, not it's not not a master <laughs> masterpiece or anything. It's just to show what I'm doing with my kicks and layering and stuff. Yeah, so the imager is something I really like, especially on piano and on pads. It makes it sound well. Yeah, it sounds more broad, broad or wide, like <laughs> broad, <laughs> bro, bro. Uh, yeah. You you make it more stereo, basically. Um, something that I actually learned by the producer Safaros was that you can actually sidechain or automate anything here. Like you wanna like you wanna automate this thing here. Uh, Or maybe if I want if I want to automate this little thing here, like if you go back one year, I did not know how you d how you did that. But basically, you just move this. Yeah, you just move this, and then you go to tools, and you go to last tweaked, and then you create automation, and then voila. You have made an automation for this, so we can like okay, hello, So that's a good way of you can automate anything in any plugin ever you just go to the tools and last tweaked and you can do that 
But I think in uh, in Omnisphere you have to like do something first to unlock it. You have to okay. So you have to right click and then enable host automation. Now you can do that. Now you can last week create automation. So you might have to if you use Omnisphere, but I I do. I love I love Omnisphere. Basically, I'm going to talk about this in a, in another video, but the plugins that I really use are Omnisphere for about 10 years now. <laughs> Uh, Serum for about one year, maybe like what maybe in the beginning of 2019 I, I bought this so Omnisphere Serum and Nexus those those are my three main plugins for all my music But then for piano I use also three plugins called addictive keys, which is like my old one uh, I still use this but I kind of started using uh, Keyscape more Keyscape and Omnisphere are made by the same company, so I can use Keyscape within Omnisphere, which is really handy. I can show you what I mean. Let's go to Pianos. Maybe here. Acoustic Piano. Okay, my favorite one, I think. So it has some they have some really nice presets here that I like. Pillowy pad piano. What I like about Keyscape compared to like other pianos is is that I think the low keys, like... Maybe not the best example right there, but I think the low keys have so much more depth and warmth th compared to the other plugins that has pianos. Th so it just kind of wins out for me. Uh, I wanted to find my favorite one, called Galactic something. Hello. Galactic. Here. Thirdly, there's a third piano called uh, The Gentleman uh, by Native Instruments that I also like and used a lot. Is this one right here. But this one, it kind of requires you to set it up with a lot of mixing, which I don't really like. Let me see. Gentleman. Now right out of the box it will be too loud. But what I like about this piano is that uh, the low keys does, don't sound that good, but the high keys, they sound so intricate and so beautiful. Maybe I can get a good example here.
I think I got a, I think I got an idea for a new song right there. <laughs> remind me, remind me if I forget. Uh, and just to compare to the last piano that they talked about first. So I think I want to keep all three pianos because I never know when which sound will fit the best. But yeah, they're good for different things. Uh, but right now I'm leaning more towards uh, the gen uh, no, I mean the keyscape one. But I think the gentleman wins if you want to make it really like intricate and like really ultra emotional. Now what did I do here? Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. This is the piano I used for many, for many years before. But it kind of lacks the, the the warmth, the warmth, I think. Maybe that's because I didn't layer it. Let's see. So, price, if you compare the pianos, uh, the three pianos that I like, then this one is about $100. The Gentleman that I played before is about $100, and the Keyscape is like $400. So, obviously, you want to buy the Gentleman that I played in contact before, because this is the best one for the lowest price, in my opinion, that I ever tried. And this is a upright piano. They made another one for a, for a grand piano. I don't have that one because I prefer the, the, the upright piano <laughs> a lot more. But yeah, definitely go with native instruments pianos like the gentleman if you're on a budget. Uh, now, I, okay, now I actually show you the pianos that I wasn't supposed to do. So that's good. We did that. Uh, there's only a little bit left that I want to show. There's only one more plugin that I haven't really touched, and that's uh, something that I got recently. Sometimes, uh, maybe you, your kicks they kind of lack something. Then you can try out the, the Cashmere Essentials. You can basically. add some things transients tape with what I like with this is uh, I'm gonna show I'm actually gonna open another project this sort of light because I use this one here it's so warm today it's actually, it's almost 9 in the evening, and it's 25 degrees outside, and I'm in Sweden. How did it get so warm? This summer will be brutal. Okay. Here we go. You can see this little thing here. Add some stuff to this, okay? Without the cashmere, sounds like this. And then with it. What what did I add to this? I added the 
pressure, okay. So I added pressure to this. I don't know if you can hear it, but I could hear it better on my, on my speakers. And there's some reverb. And then a low, low filter. So with this cashmere, you can like give some details to your drums and uh, percuss percussion. Uh, very handy. I think this is also like ten dollars or something. It's like it was too cheap to not have in my like arsenal. You c you never know when you're gonna when you want to use it. So the drop here, and the last thing that I want to talk about mixing is that what's happening right here. As you can see, uh, these are the side chaining. Side chaining the piano, side, side chaining the sub. Uh, and I'd like, I think these are just the synths, the pads and the synths and, uh, and the sub. So every time the kick hit, they also come to side chain. <laughs> I think it works pretty well. Uh, what I do to do like interesting uh, filter sweeps is that I, I automate this one. You can see here. So I automate this. I think it gives like a good, a good quality, like a good quality filter sweep. You have a lot of control over. I like that. I like this piano. So yeah, I think I talked about everything that I use for mixing. I think I really did. Uh, check out or oh, check out the ending of this. So I still need to, I need to do some mixing on this song and like four other songs tonight, I think, because Epidemic wants them pretty quick and I need to, I'm moving in two days, so I need to like get some stuff done. So I'm happy I got to do, happy I got to do this video for you and you, yeah, feel free again to check out my Patreon and uh, if there's anything that you wish for and you can just let me know and uh, I'll try to make a video about it, or if I can answer you privately, if you send me an email, or if you send me a message on Patreon, or even on Facebook. Uh, also, I'm in the process. I'm in the process of cleaning up my Spotify, as you can maybe tell. I'm. My new song is out, by the way, "Ephemeral" with uh, Elvia. You can see here. Uh, I cleaned up my my single, so. Actually, I removed 20 singles because I thought I had too much singles here because they're already in album. So uh, I cleaned up, I did some spring cleaning. I also removed two albums here. Uh, I removed, uh, I'm going to remove this as one. I'm going to remove Odyssey. And I'm going to update Tales of Hope. I'm going to update uh, Odyssey and re upload them. I have like structured everything here. You can see Tales of Hope will be these songs. 
I'm gonna upload River Flows in You, which is a cover that I did. It got pretty popular, uh, but I never like released it because it's a cover. So I was like, I can't release a cover, but apparently you can. So I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna put out Hooray Hira again, which is can I even pronounce that right? But these are all the songs that I sing, and I know a lot of people don't like that. So we're gonna like to keep them on a separate album. So for those who like it, it's there. For those who don't like it, they don't have to listen to it. But then Odyssey and Tales of Hope will be dedicated to... Basically, Tales of Hope will be all the, all the songs I did between end of 2017 uh, and then all of 2018. And then Odyssey will be all of my 2019 songs into, the, into early 2020. And then... Because I I need to structure everything. I have re I've released so much music that it's I think for a, if a new person find my music, it would be like overwhelming because it's too much. And, and so I don't so I don't want having too much music to be like a weakness. I just want it to be interesting, so you have something to to delve into and explore. Uh, so yeah, you can you can you can expect uh, two albums to show up here soon again. Because if you're wondering why they're gone for now, they're gonna come up come back soon. And then, what would I work on in summer? Ha ha ha. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna work on a lot. Uh, but basically, new album. I think I'm gonna uh, remaster Existence, Reminiscence, and Skybound, and uh, keep losing myself as it is because I really like it. And then at least, at least six new songs. Uh, Children of the Stars, which is like an old demo that I never finished. Which is really... This is my probably my, one of my most requested songs to finish. And I think I understand why now, because it has something special. You can expect the new album to be a bit darker and a bit more instrumental. Uh, so ch I'm gonna, so I wanna do this. I wanna finish Children of the Stars and release it, and then I don't want to release the next five songs because I want, I want the most of, I want the most of the songs to be a surprise for you uh, when it, before they're finished. But anyway, I'm really excited about this one as well. I'm gonna play you the intro. Beautiful Darkness, which might be the album title, by the way. I think it fits the atmosphere. And this piano, yeah. So I think I stepped up my piano game a little bit. But while I'm working on these songs, it will probably take like two months to finish the album. So you can probably expect it by July, I hope, July or August. Uh, but in the meanwhile, I have seven, I have seven Epidemic songs that will be released. So we have songs like this. <laughs> So uh, I have seven songs uh, that they want to master them first before they release them. So hopefully they will keep releasing them throughout summer and uh, 
hopefully that that will help me out a lot and you will also get a lot more <laughs> music to listen to uh and this one as well will be will be released ethereal ethereal mountains just listen to this drop Super, super uplifting and fun. Uh, so yeah, I hope you like you will like them because uh, I just made something uplifting for Epidemic because it's my job now. And uh, in return, I will I will basically release twi twice as much music. Win win. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you like this video, like. Leave a comment. Uh, I never say stuff like that, but you know, it 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 actually probably helps to get the 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 message out there. So, hope you liked it. Take care and see ya.